Welcome to the Kellogg Admissions Application video series. In this video, we'll talk about completing your Kellogg application and provide you with, hopefully, a few tips along the way. My name is Christy Heaton, and I've had the pleasure of working at Kellogg for nine years. I've worked in the Executive MBA program in admissions and also in the full-time admissions office. In addition to working here, I've also had the pleasure of being a JV, what we call spouses, partners, and significant others, as my husband is a 2005 graduate from the full-time program. In addition to working at Kellogg, I also was an MBA recruiter for Progressive Insurance, and I worked at Chicago Booth's London campus in their student experience and programming team. I have two young children and a small puppy at home that keep me really busy, so that's a little bit about who you'll be listening to during this video. Now let's get on to what you really want to learn about today, which is the application. On the screen, you'll see listed all the different components of the Kellogg application, which we'll spend time going through in depth during this video. If you've opened or started your Kellogg application, hopefully this screen looks familiar to you. For the purposes of this video, we've bundled together those first few sections of the application under what we call personal information. After you've entered your program of interest and your biographical information, you'll enter the employer section. I remember filling out job applications and feeling like this part of the process felt a little tedious. I always thought, you have my resume, why do I have to fill out all of this form information on the same thing that's in my resume? The truth is, being on this side, we use the information that you enter here very differently than we do your resume. It provides greater depth and context into your employer section and your employer history, which is of the utmost importance to the admissions committee. This is valuable real estate for you, so make sure you spend the time and use it wisely. A few things to consider. If you've worked at the same employer for the duration of your career, I would encourage you to add a different employer or add an employer for each role that you've had. That way, it allows us to see if you were a part of a rotation program or if you were promoted ahead of your peers or if you switched from one functional area to another. It also has a brief description of the duties that you had in that role. This may be something that you feel like is on your resume, but I would encourage you to rewrite that bullet if you feel like you already have it so that it makes sense to a reader who may not know your industry or your background well. So from there, you'll be asked to discuss your career goals. In this part of the application, you need to be very succinct. You're asked to talk about your short-term career goals, your long-term career goals, your motivations for those goals, and your most significant accomplishment. You have 150 characters to do that for each one. So the more self-reflection you've done as an applicant, the easier this part of the process is. In the admissions committee, what we're trying to determine is how well you've thought through this plan. Are your goals attainable and achievable? Have you really put in the due diligence and effort to understand what that next step is and what you need to get there? I would also encourage you to revisit this area before you hit submit. We get an understanding of your career goals from your application. Sometimes it's talked about in essays or video essays and in the interview. And you want to make sure that you're telling the same story in all those different places. So if your career goals shift a little bit as you're writing your application, just make sure that it all links up across the entirety of your application and that you're telling the same story. You're also asked to upload a resume. There's really no rule to this. Uh, we're always asked for kind of specifics and guidance, so I'll try to provide some here. I would suggest one to two pages. On average, our applicants have five years of work experience, so you shouldn't need more than a page, maybe two, to share that experience with us. There's no specific Kellogg format that it needs to be in, but my advice would be to keep it simple. If you're applying for a job, oftentimes a technical resume or a resume that's a little bit more specific makes sense. The people that are going to be reading it are probably more familiar with your industry and your background. Your resume for the purposes of business school is used by people like myself who may or may not know your background. It's used by your interviewer. So you want to make sure that the bullet points on your resume are going to translate to audiences who don't know you specifically or who aren't familiar with your background. You're asked to submit your test scores and your transcripts. We're always asked if we have a preference for the GMAT or the GRE. We really don't. It's up to you. Take the test where you feel you're strongest. I wouldn't suggest taking both of them, though. Uh, we do take your highest score, and if you've taken the test multiple times, I would encourage you to submit all of those score reports. We take your highest score, and submitting other reports shows that you took initiative to sit for that test multiple times. Regardless of if you had the test the highest score the first time or the last time, it shows effort and initiative and an immense amount of time. 
As far as your transcripts, you can submit unofficial transcripts through the application process. My tip here for you is to make sure that it has the date the degree was conferred. We spend a lot of time going back to applicants when this isn't on the transcript. So do a quick double check and make sure that date is there. And if it's not, submit a diploma or other official documentation that shows when that degree was actually conferred. As a part of your Kellogg application, you're required to submit two written essays. One is around leadership and the other is around values. I would encourage you to think about the examples that you're picking and think through these things. One, how relevant is the information that you're sharing? You want to make sure that you're drawing upon experience that's more recent. If you graduated from college six years ago and you're talking about something that happened freshman year, I'm probably left as your reader wondering why you haven't talked about something more recent. So make sure you're questioning kind of the recency of your examples. The other thing I would suggest is thinking through personal experience versus business experience and making sure there's a blend of those. If all you're talking about is business, we don't get to know you as well on the personal side. And if all you're talking about is personal experience, we don't get to know you as well on the business side. So make sure there's a blend of some sort between those two essays. Other than that, it's really up to you. And also, that 450 words, if you're a few words over, nobody's going to notice. Don't spend a ton of time trying to cut one or two sentences just because you're at 455 words. And if you're a few words under, again, nobody's going to notice. As a part of your application, you're asked to submit two letters of recommendation. One letter should come from your current supervisor. The second one we leave up to you, but I would suggest it comes from somebody that knows you and your work product well. Here, we're always asked who are the best people to write a letter. Does it matter if it's a Kellogg alum or if it's somebody like a CEO of the company? I always say it's the people who know you best who write the best letters, regardless of connection or title. If your manager is a Kellogg alum and they've worked with you for years and they want to write the letter, that's great. We would love to hear from them. What I don't want you to do is sacrifice one of your rec letters for somebody that only sort of knows you because they're a Kellogg alum or because they're a CEO. I also would encourage you to meet with your recommenders. I think it's important that they understand why you want the MBA, what you're wanting to do with it, and talk a little bit about why you're interested in Kellogg. So meet with them, talk to them, share your experience, refresh them on some of the projects that you've worked on, but sitting down to write any part of your rec letter is not okay. And if anybody asks you to do that, they're probably not the best choice for your recommendation. The other thing I would suggest here is that we know there are oftentimes circumstances where you're not able to ask a current supervisor. In the application, there's a drop down where you can explain why you're not asking a current supervisor. And if you feel that you need more room to explain why this person can't write your letter of recommendation, you can utilize the additional information section. You'll also be asked to submit a request for an interview. At Kellogg, we seek to interview all of our applicants. So you'll request either an on-campus or an off-campus interview. Makes no difference to us which you choose. All interviews are behavioral based. They're based solely on your resume and the person who interviews you will never go on to read your application. On-campus interviews, you gain access to the interview scheduling portal once you hit submit on your application and it's first come, first serve. So my tip here is if you know you want to come to Kellogg on a specific date, make sure you submit your application a few days earlier so you have more choice and dates and time availability. If you're requesting an alumni interview, it will take us up to four to six weeks to make those matches. We have a high volume of alumni interviews to match, and somebody's going to hear first and somebody's going to hear last. It has no indication of where you are in the process. It really just takes us up to six weeks to make all of those matches. After those six weeks pass, if in any of our markets we have more demand than we're able to meet, we would send a waiver for your interview. If that happens, we go ahead and we review that application in its entirety, and if we feel we need an interview to make a final decision, we reach out to the candidate to schedule a Skype interview directly. Okay, now the video essays. This is the last part that we're going to talk about, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here because it oftentimes is the, the part of our application that causes the most anxiety. The video essays are our chance to hear from every person that is applying to Kellogg and to hear from you directly. My advice to you would be to complete this after you hit submit on your application. Take some time to read through the FAQs on your website, although I'm telling you most of it here, to be yourself and to have fun with it. 
and to not panic. If you get cut off or if you want to end early, it's going to be okay. This is just one component. It's the last thing that we're evaluating when we're reading applications, and oftentimes it's just kind of emphasizing everything that we already know about you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about these three questions. The first video essay is your opportunity to introduce yourself to the admissions committee. There's no set formula to this. It really is up to you to decide what to do with that minute. We heard from our applicants that they wanted a little more freedom and opportunity to be creative within their video essays, and so this is your chance. Introduce yourself, be yourself, and don't talk about Kellogg. Your next video essay is your chance to do just that. This is what we call the Kellogg question. And this is a question that we give to you ahead of time. It's the actual question. And we do this to help set your minds at ease, to help you prepare, to help you understand that there's additional real estate to talk about your career path in Kellogg. But the intention is not for you to write a script, memorize it, and then recite it back, or to try to put up a teleprompter and to talk to us reading the script that you wrote. I get this isn't the most natural thing, talking to people through video since I'm doing it right now, but have confidence that you know what you're gonna say, and if there's a few mistakes that happen along the way, you're gonna be just fine. The last one is more like an interview situation. We give you the topic, a challenging situation. From there, we ask you to think about all the examples that you could share. Prepare for this like you would for an interview. Think of all the examples and stories that you could share, and then when you're asked the question, you'll be ready to deliver a great answer. Okay, so I think it's helpful to think of a few examples and to talk about some of the things that we've seen on our end. This was an example of a video essay that was great. She was in an area that had no distractions. She did all of the practice questions, so she knew the lighting was good and that her camera worked and that we could hear her well. Uh, you can wear whatever you want. She's wearing business casual, but you don't have to do that. In two of her video essays, she actually went over her one minute to give an answer. And she, as the applicant, felt really worried that that was going to reflect negatively on her application. What we liked about that is that she gave genuine answers, and we really got to know her. And she talked about things that weren't already in her Kellogg application. So it added further depth to her application. Okay, these next two are sort of our bloopers to help you feel even more at ease. I was watching this video essay, and as I was watching his first uh, essay response, I noticed in the top corner that there were some stuffed animals and bears in the, in the room, and I was thinking, oh, he must be in his kid's bedroom or something. And halfway through his first video essay response, the door in the background opens, his son walked up to the screen and started holding up toys. The applicant paused, put his arm around his son, introduced him to the camera and to his audience, and then kept going. We were blown away with his composure and his ability to really roll with the punches. He was terrified that this tanked his Kellogg application. When I asked him if we could use him as an example, he laughed and said he was so relieved when he got his call to be admitted to Kellogg. This last one is an example of somebody who went through her first two video essays and they were great. She was delivering her third response and halfway through that response, she fell out of her chair, totally off the screen, out of her chair. She stood back up, delivered the rest of her video essay and was perfect. This is another example of things can go wrong and things can happen and you don't have to be perfect in these video essays. Be yourself, be personable, give the answers that you feel comfortable with and confident with, and then be done with your application for that part. I hope this has been helpful and useful for you. If you're interested in learning more about the evaluation process or any other tips, please watch the other videos in this series. And as always, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out to our office directly.